it comes to SAS, somehow they think that if they don't buy a software but they SAS it, the commitment is lesser and the sales cycle can be uh, smaller. Because they always believe that they can, since the investment in capital is much lower, they can always jump uh, to a different provider that uh, will provide the same services. So I believe that sales cycles now are shorter than what we used to, to have. Uh, as we discussed with David a few months ago, about, and we were talking about sales cycles, it's always easier to sell SaaS than enterprise software. You need to have a very, very clear idea of how your product can solve the problem for the bank. When you go to the meeting, you want to lay out how you can get to the proof of concept in three meetings. First meeting accomplishes this. Second meeting, the, the following people from the bank need to be there, and this is what you're accomplished. And at the third meeting, you're going to design and prove the proof of concept. If the bank won't go along with that, don't have them meet. Don't waste your time saying, oh, we have a meeting, we'll come back to another meeting, another meeting, another meeting. Get to a proof of concept in three meetings and train your client to accept that as a reasonable use of their time and your time. I think today, the, um, it's easy to identify where to start. Um, a lot of these banks have innovation teams, and you identify them by cool building, people that wear jeans, who are not sure exactly what they do, there's a whiteboard on the side. They do different things and, and they are very accessible and very open, but they also can be a huge uh, time spender. So I would say this is a good place to start if you don't know exactly where to go. But then this, the caveat I would say, uh, I'll go back to Hans comment, quickly identify the process. And I'll, I'll tell you, for us, so, so we get requests like that all the time, and we come in and say, oh, we want to test it. We need to say, okay, how much, you know, let's see how much you need to pay for that. Because for us, it's not about the money, it's of course it's about the money, but it's immediately try to identify who are you talking to, is there a process over there? When you start a company, and I'll use it just a few angles, when you start a company from Israel, uh, in the company, I think you want to consider a long time before you start a company, where to corporate. Uh, FinTech in general makes more sense than corporate in the US to begin with. And it's easier to do business, open bank accounts. I mean, Middle East is not a good place. Anyways, um, so that's kind of defined by the time in corporation. This is what happens when you're still in the garage. In corporation defines a lot of the DNA going forward. It's unfortunate, but the you know, us is right, it's right because eventually the taxes will go to the country where the asset is held. Uh, but it makes it fitting to be incorporated in, in Delaware or New York. Um, as far as the balance between uh, Israel and the US, it's a culture, uh, it's an ongoing. Dynamics. It depends a lot on the people. It depends a lot on the culture that you develop. For the most part, I would uh, uh, embrace the culture that people have to assume that the other side of the ocean is doing everything they can to the best of their the ability to actually move forward. Otherwise, it's very easy to develop an animosity and some kind of distrust. What do they know? All those Israeli, all those Americans. And so it's very important to artificially or almost practically encourage cultural respect between uh, countries. In Actimize, uh, we had 50% of our revenue outside of the US, also, by the way, in personetics. And uh, I, I think that the European market specifically is as big as the US market uh, for different reasons. I think the banks over there are very aggressive at this point. I think that uh, they are open for technology, they appreciate Israeli technology. So the US banks, they will go to the Silicon Valley whether the European brands would go over here. And I think that in terms of brands, there's some great brands over there. So I think those are the two prime markets. I want to relate to the UK. Uh, I think it's a targeted marketing exercise. 40% of our business comes out of the UK. Our first customers were in the UK because the UK has probably one of the most efficient or advanced e-commerce property and casualty insurance. There are 30 million vehicles in the UK and there are 3 billion auto insurance quotes issued annually. There are aggregators and there are brokers. That is a very sweet spot where there is an acute need for what we offer before I joined the company in 2005, the first customer came. And so we focused on that. 
and, and it is a, some of the, the our customers or CEOs of insurance company are e-commerce people. It's just like the you Bob mentioned that they they were the C, they were the MD of Match.com for Travelocity, and now they're the CEO of Simply Business, which is an insurance broker, a successful one in the UK. And so, for us, again, I think it's a targeted marketing. So I wouldn't go outside of Europe or the US as mentioned here previously, but in there, it could very well be that the best market is in the United Kingdom. And I think this is a business decision, and you have to be careful with your shareholders. The shareholders want to be in the US because a dollar is worth, worth more than a pound at the state of exit, which is true. <laughs> But go where the customer need is, and if it's in London, go to London. So I would like first for most to thank our speaker, Hans David <laughs> All of them are very accessible people, so feel free to get in touch with them if you have any idea or have any question. I'm sure that uh, they will try at least to answer. Or to give you some feedback, <laughs> sorry feedback. Please uh, dialogue with us, send us your ideas about, first of all, about companies you would like to find or run, but also about topics for this field meetup, and we will continue and uh, do efforts and uh, resources to continue this wonderful dialogue between the investors and the company. Thank you very much. And Thank you for coming for